The following 100 facts will be broken up into four categories. Personal facts, childhood and family facts, murder facts, and personal quotes. We hope you enjoy the following video. Thank you for watching, and subscribe for more, you sick mother f***ers. His full name is Edmund Emil Kemper III. He was born on December 18, 1948, in Burbank, California. At birth, Edmund weighed just over 13 pounds. As an adult, he stood at 6 feet 9 inches, and weighed 250 pounds. His IQ is measured to be between 145 to 160. He is still alive today, aged 72. Kemper was featured in Season 1 of Netflix's true crime series, Mindhunter. The life and crimes of Edmund Kemper were depicted in the 2008 film, Kemper, the Co-Ed Killer. During his crime spree, the press had nicknamed him, the Co-Ed Killer. His mother, Clarnell Kemper, was an alcoholic who suffered from borderline personality disorder. His father, Edmund Emil Kemper II, was a World War II veteran. Edmund has two sisters, Alan Lee, and Susan Huey. His mother refused to show her son any love or affection, for fear of turning him gay. From a young age, his mother constantly told Edmund that he was a loser, and that no woman would ever love him. Edmund and his mother had a severely dysfunctional relationship. She was domineering and would frequently belittle, humiliate, and abuse him. Edmund's parents split up when he was seven, due to his father having enough of his mother's abuse. Edmund was extremely close to his father, and has confessed he was the only family member he truly loved. He was devastated when he left the family. Edmund ran away from home as a child, and went to find his father. The reconciliation he dreamed of was a disaster, when Edmund found his father had remarried and had a stepson. As a child, his mother forced him to sleep in the locked cellar of the home, as she feared he would rape his sisters. As a child, he would play games with his sisters, such as gas chamber, and electric chair, where he would simulate dying. As a young child, Edmund confessed to his younger sister that he liked his female teacher. His sister teased him and told him he should just kiss her, to which he replied, if I kissed her, I'd have to kill her first. Edmund later confessed that he would sneak out of the house at night, so he could sit outside his teacher's home. During which, he was always armed with his father's bayonet. Edmund has stated that he had two near-death experiences as a child. One, when his sister tried to push him in front of a train, and another, when the same sister pushed him in the deep end of a swimming pool, where he nearly drowned. From a young age, Edmund showed signs of his dark personality. He would often steal his sister's toy dollies, cut off their heads and hands, and would burn them. As a small child, Edmund began harming and killing animals. He enjoyed hunting his neighbor's pets, and especially enjoy killing cats. Some animals he buried alive, digging them up later so he could dismember and decapitate them. He killed his family's cat, believing it was favoring his sister over him. He cut the cat into pieces, and hid the remains in his closet, which his mother later found. After his mother found the remains of the pet cat in his closet, she sent Edmund to live with his father's parents on a farm. He committed necrophilic acts on the majority of his victims, including his own mother. The majority of his victims were dismembered and decapitated. Edmund would later confess, 
that each murder happened directly after a fight with his mother. Edmund believed that each female victim, was a surrogate for his ultimate target, which was his mother. Edmund picked up hundreds of women between his murders, in order to research the best ways to make his potential victims feel at ease with him. This research made him a much more efficient killer. After picking up a victim, Edmund would drive them to a secluded wooded area where no one could hear them scream. Edmund used many different methods in which to kill his victims. He used guns to kill people. He stabbed them. He strangled them. And he beat them to death. During his killing spree, students in the area were told not to hitchhike, but if they did, only take lifts from people with a university sticker on their car. Edmund had such a sticker, as his mother worked at a university. He buried the decapitated head of one victim, in his mother's garden, and left it facing upward toward her bedroom. According to him, he did this because his mother always wanted people to look up to her. During his killing career, Edmund killed a total of 10 people. They were Mord, Hugby, 66 years old, Edmund's grandmother, August 1964. Edmund Kemper Sr., 72 years old, Edmund's grandfather, August 1964. Mary Ann Pesk, 18 years old, May 1972. Anita Luchessa, 18 years old, May 1972. Aiko Ku, 15 years old, September 1972. Cindy Shaw, 19 years old, January 1973. Rosalind Thorpe, 23 years old, February 1973. Alice Liu, 21 years old, February 1973. Clarnell Strandberg, 52 years old, Edmund's mother, April 1973. Sarah Hallett, 59 years old, April 1973. At age 15, when living with his grandparents, Edmund had a heated argument with his grandmother. In a rage, Edmund grabbed, and loaded, his rifle and entered the kitchen. He crept behind his grandmother, and shot her in the back of the head, killing her. After shooting his grandmother, Edmund waited for his grandfather to return home, then shot him dead too. After killing his grandparents, Edmund phoned his mother, and told her what he had done. She told him to phone police, which he did and was quickly arrested. After his arrest, Edmund underwent psychiatric tests, and was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. Aged 15, he was sentenced to spend a lengthy term at the Atascadero State Hospital. He was categorized as an insane juvenile. Whilst at the Atascadero State Hospital, Edmund befriended the psychiatrists, and managed to fool them into believing he was fit for a release. As such, he was released from the hospital on his 21st birthday. Against the advice from the majority of the professionals at the hospital, Edmund was released into the care of his mother, who Edmund had expressed having a deep hatred toward. After being released from the Atascadero State Hospital, Edmund applied to be a police officer, but was rejected because of his size. His first murders as an adult, were that of Mary Ann Pesk and Anita Luchessa, on May 7, 1972. Edmund picked up the two hitchhikers with the pretense of taking them to Stanford University. Once he had driven to a secluded area, he handcuffed Besk, and locked Luchessa in the trunk. After raping both girls, he stabbed them both several times, and then strangled them to death. After murdering the pair, he loaded their bodies into his car and drove home. On the journey, he was stopped by police for a broken tail light. But the officer never looked in the trunk, so did not see the bodies. He dismembered Pesk and Luchessa, and scattered their remains in ravines and wastelands. Pesk's skull was found a year later but no remains of Luchessa were ever found. His next murder, 
was that of 15-year-old dance student, Aiko Ku, on September 14, 1972. The teenager missed her bus, so she decided to risk hitching a ride. When he parked in a secluded spot with Aiko Ku, he threatened her with a gun, and then left her in the car, so he could grab some rope from the trunk. Edmund locked himself out of the car, and left his gun inside. Amazingly, he was able to convince the girl to let him back inside. Once back inside the car, he choked her unconscious, raped her, then beat and strangled her to death. Aikoku's corpse was taken home, where it was raped many times, before being dismembered, decapitated, and disposed of. Next was 18-year-old Cindy Cheryl, on January 7, 1973. After raping her, Edmund shot her dead with a 22 caliber pistol. Her body was kept in his closet for two days. When his mother left for work, he had sex with the corpse and then dismembered it in his mother's bathtub. Kemper kept Shal's severed head for several days. He next murdered Rosalind Thorpe, 23, and 20-year-old, Alice Alou, on February 5, 1973. Rosalind Thorpe was able to convince her skeptical friend in accepting a lift from Edmund, after she refused to enter his vehicle. Once in a safe area, Edmund shot them both, and wrapped their bodies in blankets. After beheading the corpses in his car, he carried them both into his mother's house, in full view of the surrounding houses. After committing necrophilic acts on the bodies for a night, he dismembered them. Parts of the remains were found a week later at Eden Canyon. His last two murders were that of his own mother, Clarnell, and her best friend, Sally Hallett, on April 20, 1973. <laughs> Clarnell came home late from a party, and when she saw her son at her bedroom door, she sarcastically said, I suppose you're going to want to sit up all night and talk now. Edmund said no and good night, and left her to read her book. Later that night, he crept back into her bedroom, and struck her several times in the head, with a claw hammer. When she stopped moving, he slit her throat. After she was dead, he decapitated her, performed sex acts with the head, and then put it on the mantelpiece, and threw darts at it. He also cut out her tongue and larynx, which he said he did because they were what she used as a weapon against him. He put the tongue and larynx in the garbage disposal, but it could not break down the larynx and so spat it back out. Edmund said it was appropriate after she'd bitched and yelled at him so often. Shortly after murdering his mother, Edmund invited her best friend over for dinner. When she arrived, he strangled her to death, and put her corpse with that of his mother's. After his final two murders, he fled to Pueblo, Colorado, driving the 1,000 miles non-stop. During his 1,000-mile trip, he had armed himself with three guns, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, believing he would have to shoot himself free from police, who he assumed were now searching for him. The lack of sleep, and because of his worsening mental health, Edmund was extremely paranoid, and believed everyone was out to get him, despite the fact no one had ever suspected him of the murders. Exhausted, Edmund telephoned the police, and confessed to all eight murders. However, they did not take the call seriously. He phoned again six hours later, and spoke to an officer he knew personally. When officers arrived at Edmund's location, they found him sitting quietly, and he did not resist arrest. When in custody, officers asked him why he had handed himself in. He replied, the original purpose was gone, meaning his mother. At his trial in 1973, he was found guilty but sane. He requested the death penalty but capital punishment was suspended in California at the time, so received eight concurrent life terms. Edmund Kemper was imprisoned at the California Medical Facility, alongside serial killer Herbert Mullen, and Charles Manson. On his mother, Edmund said, she was there to use me as an example on how inferior men are. On the subject of his fractured thought process, he said, 
One side of me says, wow, what an attractive chick. I'd like to talk to her, date her. The other side of me says, I wonder how her head would look on a stick. When talking about why he killed, he said, if I killed them, you know, they couldn't reject me as a man. It was more or less making a doll out of a human being. And carrying out my fantasies with a doll, a living human doll. When talking to a reporter, Edmund commented that they were not asking him the questions he assumed they would. When prompted to explain what questions he believed he should be asked, he offered, Oh, what is it like to have sex with a dead body? What does it feel like to sit on your living room couch and look over and see two decapitated girls' heads on the arm of the couch? The first time, it makes you sick to your stomach. On why he decapitated victims, he said, the head trip fantasies were a bit like a trophy. You know, the head is where everything is at, the brain, eyes, mouth. That's the person. I remember being told as a kid, you cut off the head and the body dies. The body is nothing after the head is cut off. Well, that's not quite true, there's a lot left in the girl's body without the head.